So you're saying the UFOs are coming. I absolutely know UFOs are coming. I I believe in them wholeheartedly. They've been around. They've been helping us. And mm -hmm. they have to help us because we are still a society that kills one another. That is beyond belief that we do such things. We kill each other. All this and more coming up on this episode of the Truth Seeker Podcast. Really quick, before we get started, if you are blessed by this ministry, if you're blessed by this platform, anything that I bring to the table, I ask you to partner with me via Patreon. Go to patreon.com backslash truth seeker and you unlock rewards. My entire discography of music, webinars, meditations, weekly hangouts, and so much more. Patreon.com backslash truth seeker. Go check it out. Won't you come, come and take me? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Truth Seeker podcast. I'm your host, Truth Seeker. Excited to be with you today. My guest is Joni Petrie. Joni, welcome to the show, my friend. How are you? Thank you. Glad to be here. Uh, we're going to be talking all about astrology today. Ready to dive in with you. Good. So I am a Vedic astrologer. What I do is the sidereal system of astrology, which is different than the tropical Western, which most people are more familiar in the West with tropical Western astrology. But I did tropical Western for 20 years and I found Vedic astrology, which is actually the astrology from India. And I really found that this is more accurate. And in reality, this is the true placements of where the planets are astronomically, according to astronomy. So when I found that out, I thought, you know what? I have to learn this astrology. This was back in the early 90s when I first started studying. And I found that my predictions became more accurate. And it was a bit more spiritual, and that's what I was really searching for, was something that really connected us to our soul level. So when people get a reading from a Vedic astrologer, it's going to be talking more to the soul level. And that's where, where I really wanted to go with this. Hmm. That's good. Because um, when I found out about um, sidereal astrology, it made sense. And, you know, wondering why it changed, if you will. And we, and people know different things. I've heard so many different theories yeah. and reasons and people saying, you know, it's four months behind and different stuff like that. But when you look at it and you understand astrology, you would want to go to sidereal, right? Like if understanding why, um, you know, our um, astrological signs, like how we got them in the first place, right? But, how you would get them today in modern day, we would stick to the same system, which would be Vedic or sidereal, right? Do you want to explain what the difference is there? Yes. <clears throat> so with sidereal, it takes into account procession of the equinoxes, which are that everything's constantly moving very slowly, though. So it's not even detectable in a lifetime. So procession of the equinoxes is simply that the stars are moving backwards. And from our vantage point on Earth, it's because of the wobble of the Earth. But the stars are actually moving backwards and they move back one degree every 72 years. I know this is getting a little technical, but over a 2000 period time reference, the Zodiac from what most people know, the Western tropical, 
the sidereal, sidereal, by the way, means star. So the stars are moving and they have this processional cycle of 24 to 26,000 years. And what I mean by that is that the stars will change through all 12 signs of the zodiac in that amount of time. But if we go back 2000 years ago, the zodiacs actually lined up. In other words, the Western the Western tropical lined up with the sidereal. But over a portion of 2000 years, it separated and in, in sidereal astrology, your sign would go backwards, almost a full sign, not quite, but almost a full sign. So the whole zodiac has reverted backwards. So, so many people that are into Western astrology really can't accept that their sun sign has changed. But astrology is a science. It's not about this sun sign astrology that has been popular, popularized by all the magazines and newspapers. You got to know that not everybody born the same month has the same destiny. So I take this into the true science that astrology is. By the way, it is the oldest science in the world. It comes, it, it, it really has every science composed in it. And what I mean by that is geometry, physics, and astronomy. <clears throat> it also takes into account spirituality, mythology. All of these things are really part of astrology. And the true placements have shifted. And once you really look at your true map, which is a horoscope where all of your planets are relative to the signs, relative to where you were born, you have a map. And this map really does follow through for your destiny. And it's like, you know, wouldn't you love to have a map for your life to see when things get better or when things you need to avoid things? And then this takes me down another whole road of people always asking me, well, do we have destiny? Is everything faded? Do we have free will? And to say that we don't have free will would be ridiculous because why would we be puppets playing out a script? So astrology gives you these, well, and here's another thing, because Vedic astrology goes back to India, there is a belief in reincarnation. And therefore, what your chart is, is everything that you've been in all of your previous lifetimes. So when you see this chart, you can see where your weaknesses are, where your strengths are, where your gifts are, what you actually acquired in past lifetimes. And this is what we can see. And it gives you what I call divine guidance. <clears throat> don't, <clears throat> don't we all want divine guidance? And I believe in the spirituality of everything, that everything is spirit. Everything is divine. The universe is divine. And we can have this guidance through looking at our charts. <laughs> this yeah, I found that um, when you introduce sidereal astrology to people um, and they find that their, their, their sign is different, right. this weird obviously shock value for one, but then you kind of find, I guess, pun intended, your identity in the sign that you thought you were. Mm -hmm. And so there's a connection to it. Like, oh, I want it to be this, even if they don't follow it, just as I, I, I know my sign kind of thing. Right. Um, but if we're looking at the science and we want it to be right, you would be open to changing it to find which science works and it seems to be like you said that the sidereal is the one that seems to be more accurate and and works right yes you don't want to let it go because they, they have a connection with something they've been told especially when it's different well there's this attachment to and i say western astrology is very much about your personality but Vedic astrology is about your soul essence. So people are very attached to the description of their personality. But when you really look at this map and you understand what your soul purpose is, then that is so much more important 
than understanding a personality trait because I believe we all change. And this is the opportunity where you can see where your true talents are. So many people call me for readings and they want to know what their purpose is. What is their talents? What are their gifts? What are they here to do? That's what I can see through looking at the horoscope through the sidereal system. And it has these cycles of development when things will ultimately change in a big way. There's these long cycles that some of them are 20 years, some of them are six years. And when you change from one grand cycle to the next, your whole life will change, not a little bit, but dramatically. We all know we have these times in our life when we have a big move and we have new people come into our life. Everything changes, new job, new career. This is all depicted and can be seen through the cycles in the Vedic chart. Really, it blows your mind when you see that this is a system that can tell you about when and where your life is truly going to change. And we also use astrology for countries, for leaders. We can see the future for different countries. And I give predictions every year for the year looking at, you know, where are we headed? Where are we headed as a mass consciousness, not just as an individual soul? But together, we can see the trends in humanity. And that is what mundane astrology is, the astrology of the world. And you have to know that these cycles are real. Really, if I could put it into a layman's terms, astrology is just a study of cycles. And when you go back and you see certain placements before, like 2,000 years ago, you can better understand what's going to be happening at any phase in society in the world. Let, let me go back to 2,000 years ago, because I know you're going to find this really interesting. So 2,000 years ago, according to the processional cycle, was the darkest time for humanity. And in this 26 thousand 24 26 thousand year cycle 2000 years ago was the darkest and we're coming upon this circular cycle that has a high point a halfway point where people are more aware and more conscious on planet earth and then we recede back down to the darker phase again but this whole cycle, if it's if it was the darkest phase 2,000 years ago, the zodiacs lined up. And 2,000 years ago, we started the age of Pisces, which we are currently in. These processional cycles, each sign is about 2,400 years, give or take, of course, some leeway there. But what's so interesting to me is 2,000 years ago, guess what happened? That was when Jesus came to the earth. This is where the whole Piscean era began. And if you'll look at the symbol for Pisces, guess what you have? The fish. What is the symbol for Christianity? The fish. This all lines up. All the churches were built. All of the, the temples, the places of worship were built from that, from that point on. Now, what's interesting is we're on the cusp of getting ready to go into the age of Aquarius. Remember, you've heard these ages. We're dawning on the age of Aquarius. What does all that mean? Well, this is all part of the processional cycle that I'm talking about. And when we go into the age of Aquarius, the, the saying for Aquarius is, I know. Whereas the saying for the age of Pisces is, I believe. So we're going into a more technologically advanced era in humanity. And each of these cycles have different descriptions of the development and where humanity is during these phases. So going back to my whole point, these are all studies of cycles. And there's nothing more specific than these studies with Vedic astrology. And you know what's interesting is Western astrology recognizes these ages of mankind, but the Vedic astrologers actually put it into perspective that this is where we are in the perceptional cycle. Does that make sense? Yeah. Would they call that the yugas? The yugas are actually something different, and okay. you're right on with that. 
Um, I'm talking about the signs. The yugas are, we just, we've just left the Kali Yuga. And the Kali Yuga is the darkest phase of humanity. And now we're going into a much more developmental, um, technological, more advanced in intellectually cycle, but it's going to be like 10,000 years till we get to the highest level of awareness on planet Earth. Just to give you an idea of our development, we're not that evolved. People are still into greed. They're still into being better than one another. They don't come together like the age of Aquarius will make people come more together. Humanity will be sought peace and happiness, love. But the age that we're coming out of, the, the Kali Yuga, is the darkest age of all. And people are into greed, you know, fear, all of those things. So I believe the more evolved we come, the more aware we, we become of consciousness connected to God consciousness, the divine that helps guide guide us and of course eliminates fear in our society in our world so there's a lot to go but let me tell you one a couple of reasons why i got into vedic astrology you might find this interesting i love the study and the work of edgar casey have you heard of edgar casey oh yeah the sleeping prophet you got it he would go into these trance mediums. He would go into these medium sessions where he was asleep, sleeping prophet, and started speaking in a different voice. And he, the, for the most part, he diagnosed so many illnesses in this trance medium session. He started talking in terms of doctors and he was a farm boy. So he was channeling this information. And one thing he said in one of his sessions was that Western astrology was off by almost a full sign. That got my attention. Now, another thing is, is that I love Eastern philosophy. I love spirituality. I want to grow as a spiritual being. That's the most important thing for all of us to know on planet Earth. That's why we're here for our spiritual growth, correct? So I was studying a lot of Eastern philosophy and I read the autobiography of a yogi. Have you ever read that book by Paramahansa Yogananda? I have not, but I, I have it. So I haven't read it though. It's, it's, it's miraculous. So anyway, he dedicated himself to finding God and that's what his teachings are all about. What's wonderful about Yogananda is he blended the Western Christian beliefs with the, the Eastern beliefs. And I thought that was a beautiful, beautiful way to connect our world. But his teacher, his guru, Swami Sayuteswar, was a Vedic astrologer. Now, I read that book in high school <laughs> many, many years ago. And I thought, what is a Vedic astrologer? And so I did my homework, discovered that Vedic astrology was the sidereal system. And then when I found out that the teachings were passed down mainly by, by mouth, the oral tradition, so these teachings were passed down by these great seers who were saints. And I thought, okay, I've got to learn the astrology of the seers and the saints. And that's what Vedic astrology is all about to me. That's awesome. Can you uh, explain the difference between sidereal and a sun sign and how you get your, your sign with sidereal versus just the sun sign? Okay, so when you're talking about the sun sign, that's just one portion of, of your chart. Because when you're looking at the horoscope, you're looking at where all the planets are. So what, what you're talking about is you're isolating just the sun. But the sun is so vitally important because remember all the planets, you know, circle around the sun. And the sun is what gives us light. So it is a very, very important planet. And actually in tropical astrology, everything is based on the sun because it is it 
takes into account the seasons because every single year at the same time, you'll have the change of seasons, such as the spring and the fall, the fall equinox as the solstice points, the summer and the winter solstice points. That's in the northern and the southern hemisphere, that's the change of our seasons. So that is depicted by where the sun is, right? So it's very important. And that's why sun sign astrology is so important in Western culture and, and Western astrology. But with sidereal astrology, what's more important is actually the moon. And we take into account the lunar cycle more than the solar cycle. And actually these the cycles that I spoke of earlier, the dashas is what they're called, when you have those enormous changes in life, that is solely based on where your moon is in your chart. So when you're talking about just going back very simplistically to your Western sun sign, what happens because all the stars, we're talking about the signs are because of the constellations and the stars. These groupings of stars are what constitute the constellations, which are the signs. So when you say your sun is in Scorpio, then that means that your sun is in the constellation of Scorpio, where the stars, such as Antares, which is the star of the heart of the scorpion, would be there. So we're bringing into effect the stars. So let's just talk about the planets, their location from our vantage point on Earth, where they're located in essence, the through the backdrop of all the stars. So when you say your sun's in Scorpio, that's because the sun is in the constellation of Scorpio that time of year. So in other words, the planets, the sun, the moon from, from vantage point of earth, they as they travel, and I know we're really going around the sun, but we take astrology is called geocentric, which means taking it from the earth. But when we look at where the planets are, they are going to be in groupings of stars, which const which constitute the constellations. So when you say your sun's in Scorpio in Western astrology, it would be that time of year between October 15th, October 28th till November 28th, give or take a few days. But with with sidereal, it's going to fall backwards in the zodiac, 24 degrees. Now, a whole sign is 30 degrees. I know I'm getting way too technical, probably. But let me just put it this way. Your, your signs and the thing that you know your sun will fall backwards a sign. So it will probably fall backward from Scorpio and you have your sun in Libra. But the whole zodiac goes back. So all of your planets go back 24 degrees, almost a full sign. So that's why when you look at your Vedic chart, your, your planets are in different signs than they are in the Western chart. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, but do you get it? So it's still gotten from the uh, time of your birth and where those planets? Yes. Everything yeah. in position? Everything. Sun, moon, and, sun, moon, stars, and planets. So when you when you um, incorporate your time of birth, that's where you're setting up like the rising signs. So that sets up the whole horoscope as to what houses all your planets are going to fall in. So you see a horoscope is depicted with the planets, the signs, and the houses. And when you look at your horoscope, the houses are are the areas of your life that things occur in. So when you look at your horoscope, your planets are going to fall in a particular sign in a particular house. And it's like if your sun sign falls in the fourth house, fourth house deals with your home, with your family, you're going to be a homebody. You're going to love your home. That's going to be a focus. So that's how we have these different layers of the houses and the signs, here's what I say, the planets are the energy. What sign they're in gives them their personality or their color. And the houses they're in in a chart are going to depict the areas of your life that are the most important, where your gifts are, where your focus is, what your interest lies, who you are. Does that, does that help you understand a little better? Yeah. 
<laughs> okay. It's complicated, I know. But it, like I say, people don't understand. This is a true science. They're always thinking astrology is like, you know, something, you know, just fun to, you know, laugh at to, you know, make your personality, but it goes so much deeper than that because astrology deals with your cycles of, of everything. When you came into this world, when you leave, when you come back, all of that, this goes so deep. As I always say, and what astrology, the saying is, is that know thyself and you will know everything about the universe because what's within is without. And this depicts your entire lifetime of incarnations and really even who you meet and who you're connected with in this world. Because it's the strangest thing when you really understand astrology, different people's charts connect with different people. Like you may have your moon in the sign that your husband has their son, but you see all these connections. We're all interconnected through this divine study of the planets and stars. We're all part of this universe. It's that profound and it is that deep. Where does somebody uh, begin to, is there a website? Do they contact you? What if they wanted to do it on their own? Is there an app? What's the best way for somebody to find their um, accurate chart with Vedic astrology? Okay, that's a great question because I I have a free chart calculator on my website. If you go there and you click on the free chart calculator, it will draw your chart up. And if you'll scroll down to the very bottom, I always tell people to go to the bottom because uh, most people don't know how to read the Vedic chart yet. And it looks like hey, it looks like Greek. You're not going to be able to read it. But when you scroll down to the bottom of the calculations, it tells you exactly what sign your planets are in, what your ascendant is. And generally every month I go through all the signs, what if your ascendant is in a particular sign, if your moon is in a particular sign, and what that month is going to bring for you. So I do some like mini uh, predictions every month for all the signs that, you know, can give you a little bit of guidance. But really, if you want the real deal, you have to get your chart done by a professional. And they can give you the timing of when things are going to change in your life, what you can expect, and most of all, what you're here to do. Yeah, I'm on the site now and I'm filling it out. <laughs> Good. Uh, all right and it's galacticcenter.org by the way okay and so does this go by um so your the 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 time of your birth's important right so people kind of need to figure that out first right before you go on there try to get your time of birth and it's on your birth certificate especially if you're born in the united states it's a law that it's it must be recorded at your time of birth. And so many people will call for their birth certificate, you know, and have it sent to them. But unless you ask for the original with the birth time, they will send you your birth certificate without the birth time on it. Like if you're trying to get your passport or things like that. But the original has the exact birth time when you were born and that's what makes astrology so specific. It's not just, you know, you're you're all born the same month, you're going to have the same destiny. That's ridiculous. So it's the birth time. This is very accurate. Everything is down to the minute of your birth. And this is what's going to tell you about who you really are. And the Vedic goes deep into your soul's purpose. So the current dasha what is that okay yes so as i said this is all based on the moon and vedic astrology is based on the lunar cycle so the lunar cycle in india is actually based on what are called the 27 nakshatras and i know this is this is going deep but each nakshatra each day where the moon is in a different nakshatra. And actually the nakshatra's length in the zodiac, which is 13 degrees, 20 minutes, is the length of time 
that the moon, the moon stays per sign per day or per nakshatra per day. So wherever your moon is, what nakshatra it's in, all the nakshatras, just like the, the signs, are ruled by a planet. That means whatever nakshatra your moon's in, the planet that rules that nakshatra starts your entire life cycles. And like I said, that's a dasha. So the sun's dasha is six years. Venus's dasha is 20 years. Now, of course, your life's not the same for 20 years, but these dashas are broken down to smaller portions with sub-cycles. But when you change from one of the big grand cycles that is when your whole life will change dramatically. And, you know, sometimes when people are, are small children and they change dashas, that's when their parents move. They pick up and move to a different state, sometimes a different country. The whole life changes dramatically. And that can be seen by going backwards in time and looking at each of these dashas. You will see, you'll change dashas when you move and get married. You'll change dashas when you go to college and start a new life. All these things are seen in these cycles, these portions. And the whole Indian system is much more detailed with these 27 nakshatras. This is the core and the essence of Vedic astrology. And it goes deep and it's very complicated, but it is the true level of astrology. Now, let me say this too. Every culture has their astrology. There's Chinese astrology. There's Mayan astrology. There's Western astrology. And there's the Indian astrology. And I think these astrologies for their cultures really are about what their cultural meaning is about. So when I say Western astrology is more about psychology and personality, that's more of a Western interest. But the Vedic astrology, it goes into the spiritual interest because India has been such a spiritually oriented country uh, throughout time. They, they have so many rituals, so many practices, and so much devotion to their spiritual being. And I'm not talking about, you know, all these different um, deities or gods or saints. I'm talking about the essence of what God truly is. And I think through all of our different religions and faiths, it's all about our connection ultimately to the divine spirit, which is God, which is in all of us. We are all connected to that divine spirit. And, you know, all religions teach that. And I, I believe that we're all meant to find our way back home and find our connection to God. And I really believe astrology can help with that. Awesome. I do too. Well, mm -hmm. Joni, thank you so much for coming on and explaining this Vedic sidereal astrology. People want to check it out. If they want to get a free chart, they can go to galacticcenter.org to get that there, sign up for the email list and get their free uh, chart. And then if they wanted to work with you to join your academy or book a session, they can do all that on the website as well. Right. Yes, I actually teach. Uh, I have a whole university of Vedic astrology and I teach. It takes about a year to really get this down, but I teach people to become astrologers. And uh, my university is uh, all online, self-paced, but I give live classes every week with everyone. And there's videos that you watch, 40 videos that you watch. You take a test and you're also assigned a live tutor that graduated from the university. I have uh, people in every area of the world, every country of the world that's part of my university. And that's called universityofvedicastrology.com. All right. So one more question before we go. Um, what can we expect for the United States. We have the elections coming up and we know what usually rolls in with that. Is it going to be the same old, same old, or is, are there going to be any changes with this election and what's, what's coming up with, with uh, changes for the U S well, I see a lot happening. This is the year that I call the great awakening. And most astrologers get their information from eclipses 
Whenever we have eclipses, I say this is one of the most powerful tools for prediction. And eclipses, well, this is all in a cycle that takes 18 and a half years. It's where the nodes of the moon are in the heavens. But let me just say this. Every year and a half, the nodes are in a different sign. So the sign that they're in for this year is monumental for change. When I go back 18 and a half years ago, I see so many things that happened that was about 2005 and 2006. We had Hurricane Katrina. Then if I go back 18 and a half years prior to that, we come to a time when that was when Reagan lifted the the Berlin Wall. Then going back to 18 and a half years ago, prior to that, this is the most important time. This was, this was the year of 1968. And in 1968, we had two assassinations that were monumental. That was the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. as well as Robert Kennedy. And so this cycle that we're in this year has remnants of that cycle every 18 and a half years. So let me talk about what we're coming into. This April, I say, is the Great Awakening because we're going to have a total solar eclipse. It goes right from Mexico through Texas, through the center of the United States. And last October, we had a solar eclipse that crossed through the center of the United States. And the X of where the, and, and what I'm talking about, when we talk about these lines of eclipses, this is where the eclipse is. This is called the eclipse path. And what that means is it's where the eclipse is most totally seen in the world. So it goes right across Texas, both of them. And so what I'm saying is there's an X in Texas close to the border. And this symbolizes that something important is happening to the United States from the border because the eclipse path crosses there. This is monumental. So April 8th, we have a total solar eclipse. And I'm not saying that the world is going to change on that day, but it is the beginning of an enormous shift, especially in the United States. And another thing I see is when we come to the other time of an eclipse season, eclipses happen twice a year. It will be in October. And my prediction is something huge is going to happen in October that is going to change the elections, everything that we know about what's what we thought was going to happen. And I don't know that we're going to have our elections. I don't know if we're going to be able to have elections by November. Something dramatic is going to change this. I don't know if we're going to be attacked. I don't know if presidential candidate is going to drop out, but something that's going to change everything. And then I see great turmoil in the United States, and it's going to be happening by December. There's going to be a big split December. And of course, you know, you can say, well, that's right after the elections. Well, I think the United States is going to be split. And then between December through February, February is a critical time in 2025. Between February and May of 2025, I think something uh, monumental such as an assassination of sorts could happen during that time. So this is so much that we have going. But one more thing, this April, we have a Jupiter-Uranus conjunction on April 20th. And to me, this is called the Great Awakening because Uranus is that planet of sudden, unexpected windfalls and change. It rules electricity, lightning, and Jupiter expands everything in a good and positive way. Here's my prediction in a nutshell. Something is going to change. It's going to open everyone's eyes. The world will look different. It's not going to happen in a day, but this is the starting point. And for the next six months, there's going to be a great, huge awakening. And from that awakening, we're going to go through a birthing process as humanity. Yes, it is going to be painful. 
Birth is painful. But one thing I can assure everyone that the best thing is going to happen for this world and for the United States, but we have to go through a period of elimination. I believe darkness is going to be eliminated and the light is going to prevail and something wonderful will be birthed out of all of this. And we're looking at a much better world, mm. but we have to go through this horrendous birthing process and the elimination of things that, you know, you could say are dark that are not of the light because the light always prevails. But in the process of this darkness being eliminated, you know, it may seem like there's so much negativity and, and that's what I call darkness, the negativity, I, the, the, just the bad in the world. It's being eliminated, eliminated and it's, will speak the loudest. It will seem like it's overwhelming because it gets louder because they're losing traction. But let me just say the best thing is happening and it seems very painful, but the world will be in a better place. That's my predictions. So you're saying the UFOs are coming. I absolutely know UFOs are coming. I I believe in them wholeheartedly. They've been around. They've been helping us. And mm -hmm. they have to help us because we are still a society that kills one another. That is beyond belief that we do such things. We kill each other. That's insane. So that's why they've been staying pretty silent and invisible because they can't get involved with an ignorant society of sorts. But Yes, they have to help us because, you know, anytime we use nuclear energy, they come around because that is damaging not only our world, but the universe and they have to stop it. So, yes, their presence is going to get louder and bigger and they're going to help. That's my belief. What what is yours about that? It is that. Yeah. A hundred percent. I love it. The, I don't know if they I, I'll say this. I don't know if the increase of their presence is picking up in sightings. I know that our the veil is being lifted from our eyes to be able to see that they've been here uh, the they, whole time. And so we've been able to see them and know that help is here and help is on the way. They're definitely yeah. uh, waiting for the opportune moment for the shift to happen. And um, we're, we're uh, you know, maybe not, like you said, all at once, maybe a slow you know, mm -hmm. gentle shift for us, if you will, uh, mm -hmm. for the the good, whoever the good are, they would be promoted and um, to move forward with uh, making decisions, if you will. Yes, we, we need the help, you know, and it's, there's been proof that they've already been here. There's been plenty of proof. It's just a lot of people are so afraid to accept it that with the facts and with the truth, they still deny. And that's what that's where we are right now. But like like I said, this great awakening is going to encompass that the aliens are here and they're helping us. Yeah. I, I believe too. And um but yeah, like you said, it, it may not be uh, an easy transition for those who are going to be asked to step down. Uh, mm -hmm. They might not leave without a fight, but I think that um, us who are of the light will be able to know in our heart of hearts who's right and who's wrong and side with the good guys. And I think I believe just like probably most of the people listening, the people running this thing aren't the good guys by any means. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. And um, they're going to lose traction. They're going to lose their their hold on people because people are starting to wake up to the truth. And people know what's real deep within their hearts, because if they listen to their spirit within, it will tell them what is truth, what is good, what is light. And what is good is what is light is love being connected to unconditional love. That is the divinity of God coming through. And we're all part of that. And when we connect more and more to that light of unconditional love, that's when we wake up. And that's when the world comes together and all these cycles, everything shows that we're coming to a much, much more aware awareness in consciousness and being united with the divine, which is God. I agree 100%. And that is a good 
good note to end on, my friend. Thanks so much for for hanging out with me. And um, I'm glad we was able to get into this. It's definitely um, hope. I'll say that. It's it's hope that, that change we can believe in. Let's say that. For sure. It's, it's inevitable. But yes, hope, love, and knowing that we're all connected to the divine. Therefore, that's what will prevail in our future. I agree. Thank you so much, my friend. We'll do it again. Thank you. Thank you. That does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.